Welcome back everyone. At this point, we know about the nominal GDP, which is the current quantities times the current prices, the real GDP, current prices times the base year prices. We know about the deflator, which is nominal GDP over real GDP times 100. Now, we'll be introduced to a new economic parameter, which is the economic growth. Economic growth actually is also very important economic number. It shows us how did we do economically. Did we do well or we our performance wasn't as expected. So economic growth will be the percentage change in a quantity of goods and services produced from one year to the next. So here I'm comparing my production from one period to a past period. Actually, you can see the law of calculating the economic GDP down in the screen, economic growth will equal real GDP in the current period minus real GDP in the last period over real GDP in the last period. First remark, we use real GDP, not nominal GDP, because we actually, at this parameter, we don't care about the change in the prices, we care about the change in the quantities. So economic growth will be real GDP in the current period assume that it's 2003 so minus real GDP last period so it will be the past year 2002 over real GDP last period 2002 times 100 actually GDP and economic growth are very important economic indicators that we usually use it for different uses we can use it to make a welfare comparison which means that did our standards of living improve through the years or not we can use it for international welfare comparison means to compare between the economic uh, to compare between the economic performance of different countries to compare between the economic performance of different countries and we can use it for business cycle forecast let's see how we can use it to make economic welfare comparison Well, as GDP is the production, and it shows us how, how much goods and services that we can enjoy, it is a measure for a welfare or our standards of living. But actually, it's not a perfect measure. It has seven defects. What are the defects? First, it tends to ignore the quality improvements and the new goods, and this actually lead us to have a bigger number for the prices and a less number for the GDP. Let's see how. So let's take an example. We are now in year 2010 and our base period is 2000. In 2000, the camera was available there was the old fashioned camera. It has a price of $10. 2010, we have the digital cam and it's at the price of 100. So if we are to calculate the nominal GDP for 2010, it will be 1000 cams, which is the size of our production, times the current prices, which will be 100, and the total will be 100 thousands. If we are to calculate the nominal GDP, sorry, if we are to calculate the real GDP, it will be 1000 times 10, which is the base year prices, and the real GDP now is for 10 thousands. So what is happening here, that actually, if I calculated the deflator, it will show that the prices has gone 10 times more, which is not truth. The truth is there was a new product that was introduced, not the change in the price. And meanwhile, the real GDP will be less than its actual value due to the mechanism of calculating the GDP. However, this is a defect that we, that we know about the GDP it is there, so GDP, according to this, will give will understate the production and overstate the inflation rate. Real GDP also has another defect, which it doesn't include the household's production. What do you mean by household's production? Household's production is a production that takes place at homes, like the members of the family helping each other. The mom is cooking, the dad is studying for the, the kids, all of these activities, by definition, is included under the definition of the GDP, which is all goods and services produced within the country. So as these services doesn't take place to the markets, we don't know about its value. 
Some estimation estimates the household production in Egypt to be about 15% of the GDP that is not calculated as it doesn't have a cash value. The third, the third defect in the GDP as a measure of welfare or our standards of living or well-being is the underground economy. The underground economy includes criminal activities, which is illegal, and illegal activities that is under tax evasion, which means those activities by definition goes under the word all goods and services. However, the official, the official authorities know nothing about it because people, they don't report their activities to the government. So the government will know nothing about it because either they are doing criminal activities or they are doing non-criminal activities, but they are tax evading. They are not paying tax. So I will not know, I will know nothing about their production and how many money, how, how much money did they spend. So the underground economy is actually excluded from the GDP calculations. Some estimations goes that the underground economy in Egypt goes as big as 60% of the reported GDP. The fourth defect of the GDP as a measure for a welfare is actually it fails to calculate the health services and the life expectancy. What do we mean by life expectancy? On average, how long do we expect a man to live in a certain country and a woman to live in a certain country? For Egypt, 68 years expected age for a man and 72 life expectancy for a woman. Actually, this number is relatively different than Japan, which is uh, for the man, it's over 80 years. And this actually will give you an indicator that GDP is not actually a perfect measure for, for our welfare or our standards of living, as it doesn't take into, into consideration the quality of the health services. Another loud example is between the States and Cuba. Cuba has a better health care than the United States, though the United States, as we have seen from the bull, has the biggest GDP all over the world. The fifth effect is the leisure time. How much time you have to yourself to make your hoppers, to meet, to meet your friend? How much free time do you have? You, we, in some countries, GDP may be very high, but it comes at the expense of very long working hours. This actually doesn't tell us about our standards of living because leisure time is part of our enjoyment of life that is not included in the GDP. Environmental damage. Economic growth can come at the expense of the environment. We have seen in China that the great economic expansion in China came in sometimes at the expense of the environment. So GDP may be increased at the expense of the environment, but actually GDP doesn't reflect this damage that happened to the environment. Our author will actually tell us that a political freedom is not and social justice not calculated in GDP, so it's not a perfect measure for our standards of living. Well, in this diagram, actually this diagram is showing us an example of how people spend their time and the leisure time that they will have. Take a look over it, it's a very interesting diagram that will show you the variation in a, in a GDP doesn't mean that you will have more leisure time. You, will find, you may find that countries with a high leisure time has also a high GDP and countries with less, less leisure time may have a lower GDP. So at this point, we have talked about the economic growth, which is a change in real GDP from one year to another times 100. Also, we have talked about how do we use GDP and economic and economic growth to, com to make a welfare comparison and how the GDP is not a perfect measure for a welfare comparison and it have Oh, it has seven defects. Now we are ready for our next unit talking about the international comparison.